No, this is not where I expect you to be right now. Um, honestly, if you had asked me three, four years ago, I would have been doing other construction stuff. We had been doing hotels and things like that, you know, pretty, I guess, mundane stuff, right? Stuff that happens everywhere else, but this is kind of refreshing, right? It's a very new and exciting experience to kind of be out. And I mean, how many people are here doing this? Like, not a lot. When I left my last position, I was looking for something new, something different. When I showed up here, I didn't even know what this place was going to be. Okay, I'll read up on it. So I read up on it and said, yeah, I like this. I was already familiar with Bitcoin in theory, and I knew it had potential. It's like, yeah, I can, we can do this. This is gonna be fun. It only makes sense that our society as human beings Always moving forward with technology, at some point we're going to move forward to a digital currency. That we are moving in this direction because it's how we evolve. It's just a part of our nature. Bitcoin mining, digital currency is inevitable. It's coming. I feel a lot of pride and I feel a lot of confidence in what I've learned here. I like to see how much we've grown. I like to see uh, all that we've accomplished. I think it's great for everybody to have an understanding of what it is that miners do, to have a greater understanding of what it is that this company brings to the community. So my name's Chris. I work over here at Windstone. I am the electrical supervisor at the site. Every day we're going through just making sure, you know, power's going to the miners, addressing any smaller issues like uh, PDUs or fuses and things like that. Uh, I've got a few crews on each building and every day they're just going through and making sure their stuff is running. The easiest way to describe my team, we are a group of individuals who choose to act collectively to achieve insanity consistently on a timetable. <laughs> well, we do a lot of inspections on making sure that all of our terminations are, connect are connected correctly. We, we do a lot of quality control of the electrical equipment, pretty normal. We got hundreds of people everywhere working all the time. It's definitely part of the job to be able to work amongst other crews. Everybody has to have a, a nice relationship with one another. You kind of have to anticipate trying to complete these facilities as fast as possible so we can get these miners up and running as soon as we can. The scale of things here is absolutely enormous. If someone's doing mining, say at home, they'll have five or 10 or maybe 50 machines. Here we have thousands per building and then and multiple buildings. So the sheer scale is completely off the charts. But we have, I think in just building F alone, in one size of cable, like 54 miles of cable underneath the ground. You don't even see it, but the amount of work and effort and time and money that goes into building this kind of stuff is, is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's massive. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. I do believe that progress is expected within any mining industry, but where Winstone and Riot now have uh, outshined every other competitor is our rate. It's almost mind boggling when you think about just three years ago, where we were to where we are now from nothing to hundreds of thousands of miners when we've had other, when we've known of other competitors that in the same time span have maybe half of what we've done. Yeah, so the reason this uh, this site was chosen at this specific location is the infrastructure at the Sandow switch was already in place. So then once we were able to create our own substation on our site, that made it that much faster and more efficient to be able to get these buildings up and running. Having your own substation gives you the capability to do different things um, where you're able to do your own maintenance on your transformers and keep up with your own uh, PMs, things like that. For CP during the four hottest months of the year, June, July, August, and September, um, we actually curtail load on site. Um, more, most of that is when the ERCOT grid gets strained. Um, so during those hot summer days when people are getting home and they want to crank up their ACs, we help stabilize the grid by cutting power here and being able to give that power back to the grid. There are these four hottest or most energy intensive periods during the year. Uh, and it basically runs through summer. 
and we have an agreement with ERCOT to be off, basically shut down the site at a moment's notice for any of these periods. And they don't know what it is, right? You can't predict, you know, exactly how much power people are going to use. And so us as good citizens have the obligation to release some of that power, we'll shut down, stop our production to provide support for the state so they can provide support for its citizens. So qualified personnel from the electrical department will set up at key points around the facilities and start de-energizing things. Once the, the command has been given, we'll start de-energizing systems in a systematic method to try to maintain control, precision, and functionality. We'll be told at what set time we need to start turning things off and we're expected to be able to accomplish that task within a certain amount of time. If demand exceeds what all of your generating plants can produce at that time, you start having rolling blackouts and it can damage really important components. Loads like ours that are pull a lot of power, but we can turn it off when we need to and feed, and feed that back. That keeps them from running power plants at a loss. So it's not only in our self-interest to help stabilize the grid, it's also good for the general public. Because if it, it without that ability to flex, it breaks. Uh, they can, you know, cycle up if they need to, but there's always like a minimum that generation plants are running at. And so they can only bank so much power. It's not like we have, you know, thousands and thousands of miles of batteries to store this type of power. So otherwise it's just being wasted for the most part. So it's always better to just have things running at a baseline than it is to constantly fluctuate, right? So the fact that we're on during the day when people are using less power and then as people come home and you know businesses are shutting down and more of the grid is being used by the general public, we shut down so that that level stays more, more or less even, right? We don't want a bunch of fluctuations and power across the lines and things like that. That always causes issues. All, these, all the power lines running across, the transformers, the generators, everything that are running would prefer to just stay at an even level than have to ramp up, ramp down, ramp up, ramp down, right? That heating and cooling cycle really affects gear pretty badly. I like to think that as a large consumer of power, we have the responsibility though, to be able to provide for people to bring back to the grid, the excess energy that we are consuming. The state of Texas is famous for having abnormal weather be hot at one moment, the next day it's cold, and all of a sudden it's scorching hot the next day. So it's great to be able to provide that power back to the community ASAP as soon as it is required or as soon as it is asked of us, and we are more than proud to give it back to help the people. I do believe that the state of Texas can rely upon Riot comfortably with the knowledge that whenever there is a necessity we are, we are ready and willing and happily available to provide that as soon as possible as soon as they need it um well apart from moving out here uh i'd definitely say that having all of my own responsibilities and a crew and a workload to manage that is i guess all on me has really helped me kind of I guess progress as a person. I, I feel a lot more mature than I did a few years ago. It's different, but I definitely like it. And I'm definitely better off for it. Um, I can't really put it into words. I believe that I have acquired, with my time here at Winstone, or Riot, that I have acquired a lot of experience that I definitely didn't have before. You learn how to communicate better. You learn how to be uh, more efficient with your work, our community now is crazy. It's mind boggling. We have hundreds of people on site at all times. So there's so many different schedules and so many different goals all working around us, things that we don't even see. And it is quite amazing and impactful knowing that there is some sort of relationship between me and another person's work, another individual's work that I don't know of, I can't see but 
I have the confidence that they, as much as I have pride in my work, have pride in their work. Well, I actually enjoy coming to work. I enjoy getting up and coming in and seeing, okay, what do we have to do today? What's gonna happen today? You know, because no two days are the same. And that dynamic environment, I enjoy. And what we've done so far, it's been in three years, we've already achieved the impossible consistently. According to all the people in the industry who do this same thing, they can't do what we do. It's great having an industry that's this large, that provides as much revenue this close to home. There's not a lot of big jobs in a small community. So you have to travel an hour, two hours, three hours in order to be able to bring substantial funds for your family, for your family to move forward. And so me being a new father and having babies, like it's great in order for me to spend more quality time. There's a difference between just time and quality time with your children. And it gives me a lot of pride as a, a part of Riot and as a member of this community to see that there's a relationship between both parties. As a citizen, I couldn't ask for more.